Welcome back to Pat Psychology Masters. Today I'm going to be talking about a weird quirk of our brains, contralateral control. Why does one half of our brain control the other half of our body? Why is it that the sensation in my right hand is processed by the left hand side of my brain? Why is it that what's in my left visual field is processed by the right side of my brain? Why is there this crossing over? Well, let me describe what this crossing over is first. So, we have afferent and efferent neurons. Afferent neurons bring information from our body into our brains. And there is a crossing over of these afferent neurons as they travel from, let's say, the tactile sensors in our fingertips across to the left-hand side of our brain. They decussate, they cross over. But why? Well, I've heard lots of different positive reasons as to why this decussation occurs, but none was quite as convincing as one that's posited by Marcel Kinsburn. And I first heard about Marcel Kinsburn's idea in that book by Steven Pinker, The Language Instinct, which is an excellent book if you're interested in linguistics. So, We've known for thousands of years that damage to one part of the brain can cause paralysis in the other side of the body or convulsions in the other side of the body. And it's been a mystery as to why this is. We can see how neurons cross over, but there's no accepted theory as to why this crossing over happens. Maybe you'll accept this idea. I thought it was brilliant. So... Let me convey Kinsburn's idea to you with a little thought experiment. So, imagine you are a creature with ipsilateral control. The left hand side of your brain controls the left hand side of your body, and the right hand side of your brain controls the right hand side of your body. Now, like an owl, turn your head around 180 degrees. Look behind you. I can't do quite 180 degrees, but let's say I could. And let's say my head got stuck there. Then, with my head facing the other way, the left hand side of my brain would be controlling what would now be the right hand side of my body. And my right hand side of my brain would be controlling the left hand side of my body. It would have been flipped. There would have been this a somatic twist is what Kinsburn calls it, which basically means a twist of the body, or in my thought experiment, a twist of the head. You might find this explanation convincing too, but unfortunately for Kinsburn, there is nothing in the archaeological record which tells us, yes, this is what happened. But take the analogy of the flounder. This kind of Picasso-esque fish evolved from a more ordinary fish which decided to start swimming along the sea floor. And that eye that was staring into the ground wasn't much use. So selective pressures brought that eye around and in a sense twisted its head. Now imagine that flounder wanted to make it out onto the land. Constantly looking to the side mightn't be the most advantageous for it. So it might straighten itself up. And at that point, you could imagine how it might be a 50-50 chance for it to just rotate another 90 degrees as opposed to rotating into the same orientation. Now this is it's just a thought experiment. There is no evidence to just suggest that we evolve from a flounder-like creature, but I still think it's a very interesting consideration. What do you think? I liked it, but maybe you'd think it's pants. Let me know in the comments, and if you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you think you know somebody who would be interested in potential reasons why we have contralateral control, send this video on to them. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you here next week.